Hi everyone! How are you all doing this week? I had the most magical walk in the woods behind our house just a couple of days ago and I thought I would take a moment to share some of the beautiful views I had on my walk. When I'm on these little mindful walks with my fur baby Garu, all the problems in our world seem to pause for a minute and I can breathe a little bit easier. There was just something so beautiful about seeing the sun shining through the trees and onto the water and listening to the brook as it flowed downstream. One thing that made these little moments even more magical was the presence of the wind. Every once in a while it would blow across the snow-laden branches and sent a sparkling snow shower floating through the air. It was so incredibly beautiful that I was ooing and aahing during most of my time out there. Wherever you are in this world, I hope life can grace you with a little bit of magic too. For this week's art project, I'll be working on an abstract botanical painting. I feel as though my mood could use a little bit of a boost, so I'll be using some really bright colors and I'll be keeping the process very simple. Taping down my paper helps prevent it from moving while I'm working and it also keeps it laying flat. As you'll notice while you're watching me working, you'll see that there is absolutely nothing complicated about what I'm doing. When acrylic paints are applied very thinly onto paper, they tend to dry very fast. Since I want to use the scraper to make marks and move the paint before it dries, I added a few sprays of water after I applied my paint. Then I let this layer dry completely and move on to adding my second color. My whole process is about adding layers of color and patterns and texture, so I'm not too worried about how I apply my paint. Only important step to remember is to let the layers dry in between. Acrylic paint tends to dry very fast and when it's completely dry, it won't mix and create muddy colors. Even though I really like this bright background, I want to knock it down a bit. So I added a bit of white and I'm painting it very loosely on top of this layer. My focus is being in the moment and letting my intuition guide my process. In doing so, I release creating any attachment to my previous layers of paint. At the end of the painting process, you'll see how the individual layers matter less than the whole layers added together. I really love working in this way because it helps me release the pressure of having to create something perfect. The notion of perfection is such a subjective pursuit and it tends to steal away the joy we feel in creating. The pursuit of perfection can also stop us dead in our tracks. It's not all that uncommon for people to stop themselves from creating anything because they're scared they're not going to be able to create it perfectly enough. Something I forgot to mention is the fact that I'm working with a limited palette. I've basically selected three of my favorite colors and these are the colors that I'm layering on top of each other. By limiting the number of colors I'm working with, I not only keep the process simpler for myself, but I also ensure that every layer I apply will be cohesive with the next. Adding white to my colors or occasionally mixing the colors together will change the values and the hues I'm applying but I never have to worry that my colors will look out of place. I've started adding some shapes and patterns to my paintings. To make sure each of the four little paintings I'm creating are cohesive, I'm making sure that I'm repeating those patterns and shapes in all of the different paintings that I have in front of me. I don't want these little paintings to be exact replicas of each other, but I do want them to have a unified look. This way, if I want to frame them or hang them together when I'm done, they will look like they belong together. Here's an example of me having added white to one of my colors to change its value. Adding white to this color not only changed its value, but since white is a more opaque color, it also changed the transparency of the color I'm applying. I hope you've noticed by now that nothing I have done in these little paintings is very complicated. What I'm doing is not only very simple, but it's playful and lots of fun.
I had a little bit of magenta and blue left on my palette, so I decided to mix them together to create this purple color. I don't have a lot of this color on my palette, so I'll just use what I do have and create some simple little stripes here and there on the little paintings. By adding some more white to that orange I had, I created this very light orange that I'm now using to make the colors a little bit more muted, I guess. On a different flat palette, I added some blue and white together and now I'm using a brayer to spread some of that blue over the layers I've created so far. I want to add this color over some parts of my paintings, but I don't want to cover them entirely. After all, I want to make sure that some of those colors I've been adding on the different layers, as well as the patterns I've created, can show through. Sometimes the easiest way for me to move away from creating anything too exact is to start working with my non-dominant hand. Here I'm using my left hand to create marks and botanical patterns with a Neocolor 2 Kano Dash crayon. Even though I'm working with a crayon instead of paint, I'm making sure that the colors I select in my crayons are congruent with the colors I've selected in my paint. Again, I'm also making sure that whatever patterns I add to one of the panels, I'm also letting flow into the other panels that I have created. Still working with my left hand, I'm going to start adding some other patterns and shapes into my paintings. And I'm trying to keep these patterns and shapes as simple as possible. Again, this is my non-dominant hand, so I don't want to be trying to create anything that's going to feel too complicated for me. Botanical shapes such as leaves and flowers, especially when you're keeping your flowers very simple by maybe just creating a circle, are very simple to create and just about anyone could do it. Let's remember this is an abstract painting so we're not trying to create something realistic. Now I'm using my brayer again to add some magenta mixed with white to my paintings. Again, I'm not trying to cover everything. I want my marks that I've just created to show through some of the paint, but I'm releasing attachment from my marks remaining exactly as they were. For the last few layers, I mixed some white with my paints to create lighter values. And now I want to start creating a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna keep my paints completely unmixed and I'm gonna go in with straight magenta and I'm gonna add a pattern of little circles using, again, my non-dominant hand. They don't have to be perfect circles. I just want to create interesting little shapes and repeat them in all of the four different panels I have. Can you see how adding a darker value of color is already starting to create a little bit more interest in the painting? Contrast is definitely a key element of any good painting. Much like I did with the magenta, now I'm going in with the blue in its more intense format and I'm creating, again, some patterns that I'll repeat on all of the four panels. This time, instead of creating some circles, I'm creating little leaves on a vine. Now I'll do the same thing using the orange in its original format. The blue, orange, and magenta that I'm using are all transparent in nature. When I do very thin applications of these colors, that means that you will see through the different shapes I'm creating. And if I make more thick applications, they'll be less transparent. As I was creating my little blobs of orange color, I noticed that when I had a thicker application of paint, the way I was moving my brush in a circle was creating what looked like a small rose. And I really like this, so I started doing a little bit more of a thick application so that I could replicate this, especially since I'm in the process of creating a botanical abstract. Let's zoom in closer so you can see what I mean.
Now using a right cut on dash crayon, I'm going to start recreating some of the shapes I created earlier, but in a different color. If you don't have a brayer at home, but you do have paint supplies, you can use just a simple house paint roller to apply paint to your um, painting as well. And that's what I'm using here. Creating art and being creative in general is all about using your imagination. So look around your house and see what else you could use to create a painting. This is the last layer of paint I'm going to apply before moving on to creating a little bit more contrast. But again, I'm making sure I'm not covering all of the marks I've already created. Here I'm using Payne's Gray to create some foliage at the forefront of my painting. And I'm making sure that the foliage I'm creating will cover all of the four different paintings. This Payne's Gray is now the darkest value of color on the paintings. And the darkest value, of course, provides us with more contrast. Without this dark value of color, the paintings would look more muted and bland. Creating this foliage on a larger scale also provides some contrast to the smaller botanicals created in the previous layers. Finally, to create even more contrast, I'll add my lightest value of color, white. In keeping with the theme of simplicity in this piece, I'm just using my paintbrush to either dab the color on or to create splatters. Once I'm satisfied that I've added enough white, it'll be time for me to pull off my tape and my paintings will be done. Here are a few little close-ups so you can see up close how the different layers show through. And finally, here's a look at all of them together now that they're all finished. Thank you for making the time to watch and for joining me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!